Hi, everyone. It's Sherry. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Happy Valentine's Day. Let's do some paper crafting. Stay tuned. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and thank you so much for choosing to spend a portion of your day with me. And a big thank you to everyone who is supporting my channel in so many positive ways. We all need larger notebooks from time to time. So today we're going to be making a larger notebook and it'll be a chipboard hardbound notebook. And this one will be designed to hold those A5 papers. And when finished, the outside of this is going to measure seven by nine and a half. But on the inside, we will be using A5 papers. And we will be using that A5 punch that we've used so many times in recent days. So, y'all know what time it is? It's time to make it. All right, y'all, so here is a closer look at today's fabulous project. Now when finished, this is going to measure nine and a half inches tall and it will be seven inches across and the spine is going to be one and a half inches deep. So when we open it, this is what we have. So we're going to be able to make our own A5 style notebook. You can make your own tabs for this. You can make pockets that you want to put on the inside. There are going to be so many ways that you can take this and dress it up. And I'm pretty sure we're going to have a wonderful time making this project. But before we jump in, I wanted to say something about the new camera angle that I'm trying. I mentioned it earlier when I first rolled it out that I'm trying, I'm tweaking this, I'm trialing it. So what you see today might not be what you see tomorrow. So please allow me the opportunity to try different things, different angles, different techniques. And I'm getting a lot of feedback and most of it has been good, but some of you, some of you have been absolutely rude about something so minor as having my big old head on the screen while I'm crafting. It's completely unnecessary. Those of you who've done it have probably received a response back from me. And all I'm asking for is a little patience. Give me a little bit of time to be able to try different things. If what I'm trying isn't for you, then click off. Don't watch. But let's always be respectful in how we communicate our discontent. So here is what we're going to need for today's project. I have 30 pieces of five by eight paper. Now you can use text weight paper, you can use cardstock, you can use whatever it is you want to use, but my pieces are five by eight and a half. Then I have some medium weight chipboard. I have one piece that is one and a half by nine and a half, and I have two pieces that are seven by nine and a half. Then I have my inside liner. I have one piece that is 12 by nine and a quarter, and I have one piece that is four by nine and a quarter. And then I have two pieces of 12 by 12, decorative cardstock. You can use text weight paper for this. You can use cardstock. You can use wallpaper, contact paper, whatever it is you have, whatever it is you can think, try it and see if it'll work for you. So let's bring in the two 12 by 12 inch pieces and get started. All right, guys. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to add some tape to the edge of my 12 by 12 inch piece. And then I'm also going to add some tape to the back side of this 12 by 12 inch piece along the edge. And I'm using a half inch tape here, but you can use whatever width you want to use. So I'm going to peel away the tape backers. And then I'm going to take these two and we're going to join them. So I'm just going to slide it over, coming in about an inch. And that way I know that I have tape coverage on both pieces. So now we have a very large piece. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to place down my spine. I am just going to place this down. Right here. And then I'll take my other two pieces. We're going to remove the tape 
from these. And I'm going to place these down, giving myself about an eighth of an inch in spacing. I'll do the same thing over here. So I'm removing that tape. I'm going to place this down. And then I'll flip it over and I'm just going to go over this with my big old spatula to get it nice and smooth. And then I'm going to take my finger blade and just trim away some of the excess. And I'll trim away some of the excess from this end. And I'm going to remove just a little bit from the bottom. And so now we have our working piece. I am going to take my stylus, press it against the chipboard, and drive it into the paper. This will help a little. If you have a paper that has a tendency to crack, and just make sure that wherever you have an overlapping joint, that you really do pay particular attention to that part. So I'm going to go all the way around this. And basically I'm giving myself a nice little score. It's going to make folding over a little easier. And I'm even going to go on the inside here. And now I'm going to stand this up. And we're just going to do a light fold over. And so now we're going to take this piece and where we have folded this way and we have folded this way we create an intersecting point. So all I'm going to do is take my finger blade and you can see how I'm angling to remove this piece, but I left enough so that when I fold over, I have a nice creased corner. I'm going to do the same thing here. So now that we have all of our corners like this, we're going to take our tape, place some tape down like this. I could have put a wider tape down, but I'm going with the skinnier tape, which is the half inch. And I'm going all the way around. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and remove the tape from all four sides. Fold this over, go to the opposite end, fold that over, and then I'm going to take my tape runner and just add some tape to these edges here to make sure that they stay down. So I'll stand it up and we're going to fold this over. One thing that I'm doing is I start at the middle where I have that joint, I am just going to hold it and then just very gently start to lay it down and that is because if your paper is extra thick here at the joint if you start laying it down real nice and slow maybe you can also help to avoid some of that paper cracking and then i'm going to grab it here on the opposite end here's that joint i am just going to hold it while i get this part stuck continue holding it while i get this part stuck then I'll use my big old spatula to make sure that everything is nice and stuck. And fortunately, I didn't suffer any cracking of my paper. Now I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to use my wide one and a half inch tape for this. And I am going to place tape down to cover the chipboard. 
And I'm using tape, but you can use whatever adhesive you prefer on your projects. And now I'm just going to smooth out that tape. I'm going to bring in my inside liner pieces which measure nine and a quarter by 12, and then nine and a quarter by four. So we will have some overlapping, but that's okay. So what I've done is I have added tape along three sides of the back. back. I'm going to go ahead and add the fourth strip of tape with you guys along the edge so you can see exactly what it is I'm doing. So we're adding tape along the four edges of the 12 by nine and a quarter inch liner piece. I'm going to go ahead and peel away and then I'm going to take the liner piece and I am standing for this because it will give me better placement and I'm going to take that liner piece and we're going to put it down like this. Then I'll use my big old spatula just to make sure I have everything nice and stuck. Then I'm going to take the nine and a quarter by four inch piece and I have added tape to three sides. I am also going to take my tape and place it on this edge, but then I'm going to place some tape on the inside because I will be doing somewhat of an overlap and I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. So let's go ahead and get that nice and stuck. I'll peel away that backer and then I'm going to bring this piece in. Now I have tape here but where I need to overlap I don't have complete tape coverage so that is why I added some extra strips so that this would lay down flat when I put it down. So I am just going to try to match this and place it down. And then I'll use my big old spatula to really get this nice and stuck. And I'm going to go over the whole piece. And now is where I'll start working that spine. So I'm just going to do a fold up here. And then I'll flip it around to this end and get the second part of the spine making sure that I have it nice and stuck. And there is the beautiful jacket for the notebook. So I'm going to open this. All right, so the way that we're going to make it work is I'll be using this A5 metal hardware that has the three rings here and the three rings here. It does come with its own set of screws to be able to put this in, but I don't like those, so I'm going to use my own metal pieces for this. So what I'm going to do is place this down. And use my piercer. And then I'm going to take that piercer and just go through. I could use my crocodile for this, but for those of you who don't have a crocodile, this is an alternative way to pierce those holes. So when you're using a tapered piercer like this, you can go from a small hole all the way up to a very nice and large one. So I'm also going to take this and just go through the back side as well. And now I'm going to use my metal snaps to put this together. And I am going to use the larger snaps, which will be these. So when you go to my Amazon store, there's going to be a photograph of today's thumbnail. And if you click on it, it will show you some of the items I've used on this project, including the snaps and this hardware. So I'm getting my snaps and I'm getting the larger heads so I'll go ahead and feed that through. I'm going to place this down, flip it over and put the metal snap on from the back. All right, so once you have those snaps in 
For me, the easiest way that I have found to get these set is to use my chunky little hammer and pound them in from here. Now this won't sit well with a lot of you, but I have found that this works for me and I've done several of these books without any problem. If you have another way that you want to do it, by all means, go ahead and do it your way or the way that's going to work for you. But from the top side, I am just pounding in that metal piece until it's pretty flush here. Then I'll rotate it to this end. I'm going to hold it down in the middle and just pound it. And in doing that, when you flip it over, you'll notice that the snap heads on the back have been flattened out. That means that they're nice and set and this should not come apart. So now we have a nice little A5 book. We can take it and we can open and close it open and close it and now we can put our papers in and that's exactly what we're going to do here so i am going to bring in my a5 hole punch and i'll be making sure that both sets of holes are pushed all the way out to the edge so that i have that a5 separation between the sets of holes so one thing that i forgot about is that i have a little ruler on the side so i can take that ruler and press it against the edge there just to make sure that from now on with every page that I'm putting in, it's nice and aligned because it's going to hit this edge. And I punch. All of my pages are going to have that same setting. So use your ruler to get it lined up on one edge and then punch your pages. And so you can see that I have nice alignment on these. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest and I'll be right back. All right, so all of my holes are punched. I am going to go ahead and open this and we're going to place our papers in. And now when we close it, you can see that we have a nice little closure on this and you're able to see how from the side, when we have it like this, where the papers are truly being pushed forward, they will not extend out over the edge. So this will also allow for you to be able to place in some tabs and some folders. Just to make sure that if you're deciding to place in tabs and folders, you don't make them any wider than five and a half inches. Or when you close your book, this centerpiece here forces everything forward. And if you've made it too long, it will stick out over the edge. So now I have this scrap piece. I think I'm going to create just a little pocket. Nothing major, just a small little pocket. So I'm going to bring in my trimmer. We're going to trim this to nine and a quarter. I'm going to take my glue, place some glue along three edges. And then I'm going to take this piece, making sure that I'm not hitting that spine. And I'm going to place it down like this. And I use my big old spatula to make sure that I have this nice and stuck. And then the last thing that I want to do is I want to add a mat to the top. And I'm using this three by four cut apart and this is what a cut apart is. You have 12 by 12 sheet or eight by eight, whatever it is you're using, it'll probably have some different graphics on it that you can cut out and use in your crafting. These are called cut aparts or journaling cards. I'm going to take one that measures three by four. I'm going to mount it to a piece of three and one eighth by four and one eighth inch white cardstock. Then I'm going to mount that to a piece of three and three eighths by four and three eighths colored cardstock. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my glue, place a little bit of glue, and I'm going to try to get this centered on that three and one eighth by four and one eighth inch piece. So I'm just going to stand this up and slide it around 
just a little bit until I have decent placement. And then I'll just smooth that out. And now I'll take my glue and I'm going to place some glue on this piece and mount it to the piece that measures three and three eighths by four and three eighths. And this time I'm going to hold it up so that I'm looking at it because I always manage to get better placement when I'm holding mine like this and looking at it. So that just gives us a nice little border around this cut apart to make it stand out even more. So I'm going to take this and place it on my little A5 notebook just like this. I am going to add some glue. And now I can take this, put it down, look at it, try to make sure I have it straight. And so there we have a beautiful front to this notebook. If you're going back into the office and not working from home, this is a great little statement maker when you're in a meeting to pull out something like this. Or if you're working from home, what a day brightener to have something like this on your desk to be able to go to and write out your notes or add some planner pages to it and turn this into a complete a5 planner. Now what I'm going to do is I am just going to go on the inside, add a few of those cut aparts just as some words of encouragement. You can see that we have all of the space over here and that is intentional because you can see as I'm folding this how it's pushing everything forward. So if you don't leave yourself any extra space when you go to close your book, it is going to protrude over the edges and that won't look too good. All right, y'all, so here's our finished notebook, inside and out. I love how this one has turned out. And on the front, it says, just a girl growing wings. I am going to bring that first one back in so that you can see just how gorgeous these are and how practical they are and how easy they are to make. So I hope that you'll give this a try because I'm pretty sure that you're going to enjoy making your own A5 planners and designing them the way that you want them to be not necessarily the way that they're marketed and sold in the stores. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed today's project. I am still playing around with various camera angles, but I'll find something that I like and that I think will be appealing to most. If you have liked today's video, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.